Welcome to RAC Arena in Perth. It's the final match of the opening round of the Suncorp Super Netball as the West Coast Fever hosts the Sunshine Coast Lightning. And we acknowledge the Noongar Wajak peoples, the traditional custodians of the land we are meeting on here today. And today, one of the competition favourites begin their quest for a first title. And if the Fever want to see what success looks like, they only need to look across the court. Across the five seasons of Super Netball, the Lightning have climbed the highest mountains, two premierships and a minor premiership in the cabinet, and they've never missed the finals. Meanwhile, the Fever have reached two grand finals, but they haven't been able to win one yet. Today, they begin their quest for a first, and it starts here at home in the West. Ben Homer alongside former Diamonds, Cat Cox, and Nat Medhurst for the call. Good afternoon, Nat and Kath. Kath, first to you. This is an exciting one, a replay of that minor semi from last year. Yeah, I can't wait to see this one play out. The West Coast Fever in such fine form. They've had minimal change in the off-season, which is a big difference to their opponents today when we talk about the Sunshine Coast Lightning. Five changes to their lineup, and it was the West Coast Fever that got the wood on them in that minor semi-final last year too. So there's a lot at stake in this game, but let's not forget round one, both these sides just want to start their seasons the right way. Yeah, that is exactly right. Not too much change for the West Coast Fever. Of course, in the coaching department, Dan Ryan replacing Stacey Marinkovic, the Diamonds coach. Just the one change to their starting seven from that finals match last year, that prelim. And it's the Lightning with the first centre pass who get us underway in the final match of the first round of Suncorp Super Netball in 2022. Oh, wow, and it was a direct pass. You can see the intent straight from Steph Wood. Vision to the post. Conan just couldn't pull it in. That's an important one for the Fever. Looking to get themselves in front early on. Well, a stepping call, I think they're going against Teague Neal. So just an early rookie error. Could be a little bit of nerves as well. She's running in a position she's not used to. Well, first match of the season. Always is a few nerves. Here's a chance for Conan to erase those, and it's the Lightning who get us started in Perth. Advantage for the Fever. I like this change up with Teague Neal out. Just gives them another playmaker, but it's really a flow on effect. The reason it's happened is they want Anstis on Sherry, and he's a lot faster. That naturally means everybody's had to kind of shift up court but it's still going to be valuable for the West Coast Fever. It's interesting, a few changes from the final matches these two played in the Team Girls Cup as we see Fowler get her scoring underway for the season. Ariang linking with Simmons. Simmons into centre, she was playing at wing attack in that final match of the Team Girls Cup where they went down to the Vixens in the final. So the Fever, an early two-goal advantage. 3-1, they lead it. Well, that's how quickly it can happen too with Janelle Fowler back in goal shooter for the West Coast Fever. Most Impossible to stop. And most accurate shooter up above 96% last year. Steph Wood reduces the deficit to just one with her first of the season. Oh, Teague Neal, optimistic, let it go before Charles had even got to the spot. Lucky she put the speed on. And that's strong, isn't it? Oh, that's, Fowler that's, up above Dehaney. Yeah, absolutely. That's the path they'll take nine times out of ten in this game. And those two know each other well, obviously. Jamaican internationals. He's got a fan. Contact. Edge of the circle. Contact there He's from Ariang. The the two diamonds. That's goal defence and goalkeeper for the Fever. They can't do anything about that. And it's back to a one-goal margin. Oh, answer. She did well. 
to stop Martin right on the transverse there. And a different path going in that time. A flat ball into Janelle Fowler. And she's starting this season like she has the last three, of course. Most valuable player across the last three seasons of Suncorp Super Netball, Janelle Fowler, is Hinchcliffe. Game number 50 in the National League for her. Oh, nice move, Steph Wood. You can see both of the defenders for the West Coast Fever sitting back covering Conan. Leaves all the space in the world for Wood. Tight start to this one. Simmons, some good link up with Teague Neal, and here's Glasgow. Into Bunny the circle, Fowler dropping it back Bunny outside. And now Glasgow <laughs> makes it two from two. And they're out by two, the fever again. Nice ball too. It's really looking fairly effortlessly in attack for both of these sides at the moment. Defence hasn't been able to stop too much going inside the circles. Which is good news for the Lightning, sixth best in attack last season. Conan again successful. And again, Verdi Simmons home alone. No one seemed to be defending her on that passage down. And they wanted to get right to the circle edge, the best feeding position possible. Well, they're getting good ball into Fowler. Oh, the fever early on in this one. Conan well outside the circle. Yeah, just nowhere to go. Sherian tries to save the day. Now here's Wood. And Wood will get the opportunity here. And she's going to go from long range. And it bounces out to Steph Wood. So a chance here for the Fever to make it a three goal advantage. Well, again, you can see Dehaney starting behind Fowler on the last couple of approaches. It means the ball into Fowler, Fowler can be flat, but she's a lot higher up outside the circle than she normally is. And now they've got the centre pass as well, the Fever, so they've really got a break now on the Lightning. Glasgow makes it for the difference. A wonderful start this in the first quarter for the home team. Only played four matches in the West last year, so they're excited to be back in front of the Green Army. It's a three goal margin at the moment. Back out to four with Fowler again. Seven from seven. Fowler, Glasgow, three from three for the Fever. Wood linking with Cassidy. There, yeah, Courtney Bruce just all over Kara Conan, moving around the body. But hard to get a ball from behind. Conan did well to keep her off. And she does give away a few penalties, doesn't she? Courtney Bruce, second so, highest last year. She certainly likes to test the waters early on in a game, see what she's going to get away with as far as the umpire's concerned. And Fowler again. 11-7, the lead now for the Fever. Sherian and Conan. Kate Walsh, you may know her as Kate Shimon, but she got married in the off-season. Oh, Steph Wood, great lean from Courtney Bruce in. Spooked her from having a shot at the goal. So a couple of misses for Steph Wood in this first quarter. It's costing lightning at the moment. How's that transition, though, from the West Coast Fever? Did not have ball in hand for more than a second that whole way down the court. The defence needs to pick up for the Sunshine Coast Lightning. And we know that's the area where all the change occurred for the Lightning in the off-season. Three big losses. One of those, of course, Pretorius, who's expecting her first child, so she is not out there for the Lightning. The other two, Maweni and McAuliffe. McAuliffe retiring. Maweni heading to Bath. So 
That's the issue at the moment. And Dehaney, the, the new recruit from the Vixens, unable to stop her countrywoman, Janelle Fowler. Nat Medhurst is courtside for us. Nat, what have you made of this first quarter? Well, there's still plenty going on inside the circle, isn't there? The umpire constantly calling, contact, holding. Two Australian Diamonds in defence, two Australian Diamonds in attack. We'll come back to Nat a little later on. Again, where's the defence on the West Coast Fever? Absolutely nothing coming from the Sunshine Coast Lightning. That defence effort's got to start way earlier from the attackers up the court to try and slow it down. Otherwise, it's a steam train. And they're absolutely outstanding, their accuracy at the moment, the Fever. 14 from 14. Fowler and Glasgow, superb. And that's a beautiful ball. Weave through the gap from Cassidy to Conan. They need a lot more of that, though. So the Power Five approaching. Is this an opportunity for the Lightning to reach the deficit? The Fever, though, with the centre pass. Better defence here, but it still looks a little like the Lightning are kind of just floating, almost in a bit of no man's land. They've got to get up three feet away, or they've seriously got to start blocking. Oh, it's like shelling peas, isn't it, for Janelle Fowler. Six the difference. Power five is approaching. Will they try and maintain possession until that? They won't. So it'll just be the one. So it's back to five. Conan successful. And now it is the power five. So the Suncorp super shot is in play. Oh, an easy one again over the top. But I'm really loving what Dehaney's giving us. And she's pushing Fowler high. Fowler's not taking every shot right underneath the post as you'd normally see her do so. So the Lightning, they took the fewest super shots on average last season. They were the least successful as well. Or scored the fewest last season. But they're going straight away here, it would seem. Well, it all comes apart because Ariang with the interception. That's a massive play from the Diamonds goal defence. And if they can drain this, well, that's going to be the oh. exclamation point, isn't it? Well, that's why she's in the side. Firstly, Ariang with the interception. And then it was all finished off by Sasha Glasgow. Drains a super shot, and it's eight. Do they get greedy and go for ten? Yes, they do. Sasha Glasgow, two from two from the super shot. Well, let's not just talk about the margin. They're sitting on 20 points, and there's still nearly, well, just under four minutes remaining. This could be a huge scoring quarter for the West Coast Fever. Well, they've got to stem the damage here. This has to drop, and does. Just eases the pressure that was building on the Lightning. Problem is, it's a fever centre pass. So they go for the higher percentage option here, or does Glasgow go, I'm feeling good, I may as well just keep going for the super shot. Well, she's going to go high percentage. Yeah, the beauty is just that, though. She can shoot them knowing she's got one of the best defensive rebounders in the game in Fowler. I'd be pulling the trigger left, right and centre if I was in her position. Sherian. And that now Conan. is a good ball. Courtney Bruce's head was facing the wrong way. Back to the play. Well, it's just all about getting to quarter time. Being somewhat in touch, isn't it, for the Lightning? Comfortable again for Fowler. How about the accuracy at the moment? 100% from the Fever. Well, both shooters for the West Co for the Sunshine Coast Lightning, sorry, outside the circle. And that's exactly where Steph Wood needs to be right now because that's what they've got to start doing, sinking those, staying in touch. Seven points, Wood with a super shot. The specialist, despite surprisingly the 
Lightning scoring the fewest last season. Well, Fowler. Not too easy again, isn't it? Again, drains, so it's back out to eight. Sherian linking with Hinchcliffe. As I said, first match for Lightning. 50th in the National League after that switch from the Firebirds. Conan, well, it was a flat shot, wasn't it? Was never going in. Courtney Cor Bruce yeah, beating Simmons. Loves those wind-up shoulder passes, Courtney Bruce. Look at the flow down the court and Glasgow just dropping short onto the rim. Fowler again, all over Dehaney at the moment in that battle between goalkeeper and goal shooter. 25 point quarter for the West Coast Fever and still a minute to go is quite astonishing. Well, we were impressed by the Vixens when they dished that up in the last match. And there it is. 25 points in the first quarter, and they're not done yet. There's still 50 seconds. Well, Ben, I'm just doing the maths in my head. You get four quarters at that rate. That's a big, big score. Well, that's getting in near the record books, isn't it? As Wood to Conan. They've got 16, but they're nine behind Fever. So this is a chance to go to 26. That's what I was saying, Vixens nailed a 25-point quarter against the Firebirds. They've gone to 26. They've lifted the bar, the West Coast Fever. How about this from the home team? The Green Army absolutely on their feet. Cassidy, this would be big. To make it eight, Wood always delivers, does it, she? When Lightning need a goal, especially a Suncorp super shot. And at quarter time, it is the West Coast Fever who lead it by eight, 26 to 18. We'll be back with the second quarter after the break. Welcome back to RAC Arena in Perth. And it is the West Coast Fever dominating at the moment in this replay of the minor semi-final from last year. Sasha Glasgow absolutely outstanding. The defence for the Lightning, Hinchliffe and Dehaney unable to do anything at the moment to stop Dan Ryan's team, Cap Cox. They've been very impressive as we see the Origin Energy team huddles. Well, he's having a good chat with the attack in there, but he really doesn't need to. The end that needs the chat is this one. At the moment, the West Coast Fever having a field day in attack, and it looks like they're barely defended a lot of the time. So we know it's a new defensive line. We get it. It takes a while for those combinations to gel, but they've certainly got to do something quickly to stop that flow. Of course, Katie Ann Dehaney coming across from the Vixens, just getting herself into the groove. And of course, the reason she came across is to get more time on the court. And we've also got Tara Hinchcliffe as goal defense for the Lightning. She's coming back from that ACL very early as well. So you just wonder how they are going inside that opening quarter. Yeah, and if you think about the two that left the Sunshine Coast Lightning too, Pumza Maweni, Carla Pretoria, South African teammates. So they've spent a lot of time playing together and that natural understanding of structures and what each other was going to do was a lot more succinct than what we're seeing now. It'll take some time, but as I said, I think wholly and solely across the court, starting from the goal shooter down, everyone's got to pick up their defensive game. So it's looking good for the Fever at the moment. They've won five of their last six against the Lightning, leading that head-to-head 7-6. -head but there's still plenty of time remaining. Three quarters for the Lightning to pull this back. First centre pass of the quarter with Verity Simmons. So the fight back has to start now for the Lightning. Ariang over the top to Anstis. Oh, that's a dangerous ball. Hinchley had a good look at it. Just couldn't get a feet there. 
Well, Glasgow, that's only worth one, but she is draining them from everywhere in this first half. Just carrying on where she left off in the first quarter in the second. Well, as is Steph Ward, she wants the ball. They've got to give it to her. Got to pay credit to these two defenders from the West Coast Fever. Not going to get opportunities. Conan comfortable from there. Nat Medhurst is courtside. Nat, what have you made of the opening part of this match? Uh, Fever have absolutely dominated. And it was interesting listening to Dan Ryan at the quarter time break demanding so much more of their defensive lineup. He wants them to be ferocious, to really attack that first ball. Um, and particularly for Courtney Bruce in this instance, where Conan's out, as we can see, she's really, really trying to work her and um, keep, keep her busy. Thanks, Nat. And the Lightning might be having some audio <laughs> audio issues there. The long ball, great vision again. Something the West Coast Fever do exceptionally well. Eyes to the circle. Why would you not when you've got a target like Fowler down there? And Fowler again. Just too easy. Nine points at the moment. The gap. Nine goal margin the way of the Fever as Conan is contacted. And Cassidy with the free pass and now finding Wood. Oh, Sunday Ariane, what good positioning. Right in front, up strong. Well, hasn't she been outstanding? And you can see why she's part of that diamond squad. Hinchliff. And you just wonder, Kath, if it continues this way, whether the Lightning will make changes at the defensive end. Well, they're going to have to do something. I think the issue is who, though, do you put in there? Have got the twin for Tara Hinchleaf in Maddie on the sideline. They're twins. They could probably work it out pretty quickly. They would know each other's game inside and out. But you also do have Kate Walsh there. She's probably more used to being inside the circle. She's an option to put back. Well, if Fowler doesn't, Glasgow will. It's nine again at the margin. Most accurate shooting side last year, the Fever, just carrying that on in 2022. Well, there's some solid defence coming from Courtney Bruce and Sunday Ariang, isn't it? Most of the shots being taken are by Steph Wood on that arc. They can't get any closer. Oh, we actually mentioned Maddie Henschleif. She's on the court at the moment in wing defence. So a rolling subs made made for the Sunshine Coast Lightning. Oh, rebound is collected by Fowler, and you mentioned that earlier, Cap. Even if Glasgow does miss, you've got the rebound there taken by Fowler. Well, oh, dangerous balls across the court. Starting to come in, up in play here a little bit from the Sunshine Coast Lightning. Ariane off the body. Just couldn't turn herself to get it. So Conan reducing it back to eight. So as Kath said, the pitch lift twins are out there. Kate Walsh replaced at the moment, but it's not stopping Janelle Fowler. And many defenders have struggled to stop Janelle Fowler. So it's no slight on the Lightning players as Conan again. She's doing her job at the other end along with Steph Wood at the moment. But they're going to need some help from their defensive end. Fisher oh. again straight up the guts if you don't mind. Straight through the middle from Simmons to Fowler. That will please Dan Ryan. Well you look at that accuracy and Glasgow's only miss 
It was collected on the rebound by Fowler anyway. Well, that's been a bit of an issue for the West Coast Fever is the amount of shots being put up by their goal attack. They normally pick up that wing attack, extra wing attack feeding role. So great to see Glasgow actually having a crack at the shot there. Well, let's go down for another thought from Nat Medhurst, who's courtside, Nat. Yeah, this Fever um, front line, I think, with... Teague Neal and Glasgow is working beautifully and it's all from their setup on this transverse line off the centre pass. And if you're watching, they are doing a lot of setups, which is allowing it to be really clear on who's going over for the pass and then as well setting up for that second phase. And they're actually really complimenting Simmons, who loves the fast pace and being able to give that give and go, whereas the other two are a bit more settled. So they're allowing depth, they're clearing what their setups are and they're really exploiting the space nicely. Thanks, Nat. As you can see, their contact penalties being given away a lot more by Fever. Well, do you know what that is really telling? Because the Sunshine Coast lighting just five penalties. That's because they're so far off the body. They're actually not in the contest. And you can see that is showing on the scoreboard at the moment, you can see their penalties, 21-12. So Cassidy finding Wood quickly to Sherian. Much better second phase play and great confident release into Conan. That's more like the Sunshine Coast Lightning we know and love. Simmons and now Fowler. And that's a poor giveaway now by the Fever. So the Lightning really have to take advantage. They've got the next centre pass. They have to make this count. So Conan, 17 from 18. And she's saying, let's get it back down my end and reduce this back to six. Well, that second phase, really just a nothing ball from Laura Sherian into Steph Wood. And then Steph, though, great timing just to plonk herself at the oh, top of the circle. It. That was stolen. Oh, that's just too good. From the Liz Ellis Diamond Award winner last year, Courtney Bruce, the captain. Well, it looked like they both had their hands on the ball, didn't they? She just ripped it out. So Glasgow to Fowler, and this is why. Here's the Harvey Norman replay, and look at the effort from behind as well. That is tough to do. No reaction as well from Courtney Bruce, what's there? Just strolling up the court. Glasgow bounced around the rim and through. So in this second quarter, the Lightning leading 10-9 at the moment. So they're just holding with the fever. This and their points are blowing out, aren't they? 230 for the West Coast Fever and just 114 to the Sunshine Coast Lightning. That right there is the margin, isn't it? That's the score. Yeah, that is certainly the case. And contact with possession. So a couple of Errors just coming from Janelle Fowler. It was a ball delivery moments ago. Now the offensive contact. So the Twins being out there, it's just working in Lightning's favour at the moment. We have a look. Just trying to get around the body and in front. She knew straight away. You could see it on her face. So contact on hitch slip. She finds Sherry in and now Wood. Another contact. That is contact centre. And now Conan. Successful again. And as you're Lightning. saying, Kath, the reason is why the contacts are heavily in the Fever's favour in this first half of the match is the fact that down the other end of the court, the Lightning just aren't getting close enough. That is Whoa. not going to fall for Lightning. Well, that's got to be a contact. Courtney Bruce real and truly backed herself into it. Lucky to get away with that. So Teague Neal, her pass, got a touch in there. Hinchcliffe as it... She tried to find a teammate and... 
There's an obstruction against the fever. Handed from Simmons, but it's a penalty here for Lightning. So just get a chance here to slow things down. It is the power five, and the super shot does not fall through for Steph Wood. Just think about how big that would have been. It would have reduced it to five. That's as close as they've been for quite a while, but it's still seven. Courtney Bruce is starting to monster Kara Conan. If that keeps up, it wouldn't be a bad thing to consider a change there. We saw Riley Batcheldor absolutely kill it at the TGC. 19 years of age, fearless. Glasgow initially was thinking about the super shot, finds Fowler instead. And timeout has been called. So it's an eight point margin. And as far as I understand, the West Coast Fever called that timeout, and they're absolutely dominating. So interesting to see what Dan Ryan is going to say to his side in this HCF tactical timeout. Maybe just not happy, Kath, with how things are going in this second quarter. Yeah, a lot of teams do have sort of planned ahead of the, the time timeouts when they want to take them, when I want to talk about things. But he probably is sensing a little bit of a mental shift as well. Well, this is interesting here. Courtney Bruce is moving to goal defence. It and would And taking the cut on Sunday because she, like, she's getting the call at the moment. When you go with them 10, particularly the sweep across, you're getting the call. Play the momentum, though, when the ball's on, when the whistle goes, we pick it up and we all work together then to move it around. Let's go. You got this. The words there of Kylie Byrne, the Sunshine Coast Lightning coach. So we'll just see what the changes here for the fever. It looked as though Courtney Bruce is going to goal defence the captain. Well, she's certainly got plenty to say in the huddle there, doesn't she? And does that mean Rudy Ellis could be coming on? Well, it does look like Rudy Ellis has gone back on to Kara Conan. Interesting call. I felt like Courtney Bruce had just started to get on top of Kara Conan. Now the change has been made, so she clearly has the instruction to just go and stop Steph Wood. So Fowler drops it through. 39 30. So it's a debut in Fever Green for Rudy Ellis, who's out there in goalkeeper now. Well, Riley Batcheldor is actually on as well in at goal shooter. So this is her debut for the Sunshine Coast Lightning, just 19 years of age. Well, debut overall, first National League appearance for Batcheldor. But the flow of goals is continuing the way. It's a flood at the moment for the West Coast Fever, and they've got another centre pass. So that HCF tactical timeout has worked an absolute treat for the Fever. Well, don't you love how the defence just completely gave up even trying to stop Fowler shoot that? So there is Riley Batcheldor, as you said, Kat, the 19-year-old. There's a touch out to Wood. And it's not going to drop through for two. Batcheldor with her first in the Suncorp Super Netball. How's that one just to ease the nerves for the 19-year-old? This is much better defence coming from the Sunshine Coast Lightning now. The Fever, for the first time in a long time, have been slowed up. Glasgow for two. Yes, everything's falling for the Fever's way at the moment. Nat Medhurst courtside. Yeah, I was quite surprised with this, the change by um, the coaches 
in taking Conan off. I thought she was actually doing quite well when the Fever defenders have actually started hunting a little bit more, whereas I think that's something that the Lightning really need to try and expose and making sure off the centre pass they are getting depth, which is something, Kath, you touched on, that they need to work on and really making sure that they've got those two options, using the ball to shift the defenders and open up the space. And they still have opportunities to do that with these changes um, that the Fever have put on out there, so they just need to make sure they play smart. Yeah, you're right, Nat. It's really interesting that they actually took Conan off. Then the change came, Rudy Ellis. You'd be surprised that Conan doesn't go back on when there's suddenly a Rudy Ellis as her opponent. An interesting decision making. So the flow continues for the Fever. 13, the difference now. Oh, Sheridan, well, she's tiny, but she's got the jumps. Contested with Courtney Bruce. And again, getting herself about Sherry, and so it will be the Sunshine yep. Coast ball here from the sideline for Hinchliffe. Wood firing it to Sherry and returns it to her captain. Cassidy feeding Batchelor for her first Suncorp super shot, and she nails it. The 19 year old. Is starring at the moment for the Lightning. She's going to have to produce a few more of those. Well, over the Liz Ellis Diamond winner and Courtney Bruce, yeah. too, if you don't mind. But another turnover. Absolutely crippling the Lightning at the moment. Glasgow to Fowler. Well, they don't have to go up in twos at the moment. Just consolidate. And that's what they do. It's a dozen. A dozen the lead for the Fever. Just seconds remaining in the second quarter. Or could they make it 13 or maybe more? Fowler makes it a 13 point, 13 goal, I should say, advantage in this second quarter. And at half time, absolute domination from the West Coast Fever at RAC Arena. They haven't had the opportunity to play too often in front of the home fans. Just four times last season, they are making up for lost time. 46-33, the score at halftime. Kath Cox, the Lightning have got some work to do. They've got some work to do, but they narrowed the gap in that particular quarter. That was only 19 to 15, so that quarter will please Kylie Byrne a lot more than the first did. And they're still in touch when you think about the fact you've got a Steph Wood who is really in some decent form with these super shots at the moment. Let's get some reaction. Here's Nat Medhurst. Alice, here at RAC Arena, it must be very nice to be back playing in front of your home crowd after what's been a, a long time. Yeah, it has been a really long time and we're really grateful to have round one here because we don't usually have it and to have the support of the crowd has been amazing. And wing attack for you coming out of a bit of an unfamiliar position. You had played there a little bit in pre-season. How are you finding that um, coming out in this Suncorp Super Netball season? Yeah, it's been really great. We've got a lot of combinations within the group and um, a few of us can swing between the wing AGA and um, yeah, just taking it all in and I'm um, enjoying the line with Sasha. And no doubt nice to have the pressure off from shooting goals for a change. Yeah, I know, it's a bit different. It's pretty good. <laughs> No worries, thanks, and all the best for the second half. Thanks, Nat. Thanks to Nat Medhurst and Alice Teagneal. What a first half produced by the West Coast Beaver. The halftime show with Hannah Hollis and the team is coming up next. Welcome back to RAC Arena in Perth, where it is all the fever. They have never won a title. Can they end that drought in their 25th year? Incredible, isn't it? They've been one of the strongest sides across Suncorp Super Netball, but it's the Lightning. They've got two titles up the other end of the court. The fever, they want one this year. Kylie Byrne, the Sunshine Coast Lightning coach, has been good enough to join us. Kylie, how do you stop the fever down that defensive end in this second half? Um, I think it's actually the whole court that we need. It's not just relying on the defences, and they just move the, bar, the ball far too quickly. Um, and that's we've just got to stop it from the moment they get the ball in their hand. It, uh, you know, we've got to we've got to put that pressure on early. Kyle, is that what prompted you to make the change there with the Hinchliff twins out the front? 
Yeah, we were just trying to stop that impact of Verity as well. But um, look, and you'll see we've come out with changes across the whole board now. So everyone's got to rise to this challenge. And I know that they can actually do it. But um, yeah, we've come out and just hope our versatility now is what's going to get us through. Interesting to see too, Kara Cohen and go off and Riley Batchelor get a little bit of a start there. Her debut tonight. What was the, the uh, idea behind that one? Yeah, we're just chasing super shots, which is what, you know, Rue's got wonderful range, but, um, you know, Kara actually has been putting up as well, but it, it was just certainly to try and peg that lead back through super shots. Thanks so much, Kylie, for your time. Good luck. Thanks, guys. Kylie Byrne in her third season as Sunshine Coast Lightning head coach. Also coach for the Australian under-21 side, where, of course, she works with the likes of Annie Miller and Riley Batchelor. So, and you heard from her, changes all across the court. And what we're noticing right now is Kate Walsh is dropping back into goal defence. She was playing in wing defence in that first half. You can see Steph Wood has gone to wing attack. Batchel doors into goal attack. So, Kath, it's all changed for the Lightning, and well, you can understand why. Yeah, she's done everything but the kitchen sink out there, hasn't she? And you heard her say then that they had to get the changes out and attack because they had to chase the super shots. That's not a position you ever want to find yourself in, but that's how far this game's blown out. And at the moment, she's just doing whatever she can to try and get it back. So plenty of change made. That may well just give the Fever something to think about again. So underway in this third quarter. And it's Lightning who have this first centre pass and really have to start strong here and they make the mistake. And now the Fever have a chance to extend this out to 14 goals. Well, some changes to the West Coast Fever as well. Jess Anst just moved into the middle. Stacey Francis Bayman on to wing defence. So Verity Simmons has gone to the bench and Laura Sherian off, Maddie Hinchliff, the what? sub there as well. So, whew, it's all happening. That's an interesting move because we heard from Kylie Byrne how much she spoke about the danger that Verity Simmons presented across those first couple of quarters. And now she's back to the bench. So, Fowler just continues on where she left off in that first half. So, 34 from 34. How about that accuracy from the Jamaican international? Well, Sherian is actually still on the court. She's still there in centre. So there's so much happening, we can't even keep up with the changes. Well, that's where she was playing in that uh, final match in the Team Girls Cup. Cassidy was actually playing in wing attack. Sherian in centre, and now Sherian started today at wing attack. Now back oh. to centre, Ariang, another interception. She is playing an outstanding match. That's four from the Fever, and Ariang would have most of those. It should never have been able to happen, though. Batchelor had such a good screen on and just let it through at the last minute, the blink of an eye. You can see the screen from Batchelor, but just opened up the space into Ariang. Well, she's got half of the intercepts. Sunday, Ariang, so Fowler. They're up to 50. And we're just into the third quarter. Well, this could be an absolutely monster score, couldn't I? I'd love to see someone get to 100. How well, good. They're, they're on the right path, aren't they? Well, they're setting their stall, aren't they? First match of the season, one of the competition favourites. As you wrote about during the week, Cass, Batchelor just brings it back to 16, but... It's an absolute mountain to climb. This is Everest-like for the Sunshine Coast Lightning. The confidence of Sasha Glasgow passed off to Fowler, started walking back to the centre pass. And the thing is, they don't have to take any risks now, the Fever, at all with super shots. They could just give it to Fowler all day. It's the Lightning that have to make a run. Yes, yeah, so I suspect the last five minutes of this quarter will again. Kara Conan has been completely monstered by Courtney Bruce in this outing. It's another turnover. You can see a dozen now from Sunshine Coast. It's 18. Courtney Bruce must be pretty happy with how things are tracking at her end of the court. Here's a HCF tactical timeout. And maybe... 
more changes could be on the way for the Sunshine Coast. You just wonder, did they make too many changes there at half time? You think about it, you come into this in the pre-season, you go through players playing in their positions and you change it all up after the first half. Was it too quick? So it's a different school of thought, isn't it? Let's have a listen to Kylie Byrne and see if we can pick up why. So pass accuracy now is, is what we've got to work to. It's the most important thing. Have a look. Use the ball to move them because these defenders will actually shift and then go again. Use it somewhere else. They have got a lot of work to do. The Lightning passing accuracy, the key there from the coach Kylie Byrne. As players, do you sometimes forget that you've got the boom mic over the top <laughs> cut at all? <laughs> I don't know if Kate Walsh was aware of that. Well, that's the heat of the moment, isn't it? In the midst of the battle. So you can see Annie Miller's been brought on to wing attack, put Steph Wood back. I'm, I'm amazed to actually see Kara Conan still back at goal shoot. I would have liked to see Bachelor stay there. She was doing a good job before. Kara Conan, if she's going to stay there, needs to step up and she needs to muscle up. So looking to build this lead, the West Coast Fever. It's fever pitch at the moment in the West because the Green Army are full of voice. And this is, well, about to be 19 based on the accuracy of Fowler. Well, that's 100 40 from 40 for Janelle Fowler. Wow. What a player. What a player. And we know last year how well the Fever did. They won the most matches during the regular season, knocked out in the prelim by the Giants. So they're a team who is so hungry to go one better, make it to the grand final. They've been beaten, of course, on this court by the Lightning. Well, umpires really just trying to be heard at the moment, wanting to keep control of this game. They can potentially sense it's getting a little bit rough and a little bit physical. Well, you can see why last season, coming into this season as well, they've got the best centre pass to goal conversion in the competition, the Fever. And just getting it to Fowler so efficiently at the moment. Well, Courtney Bruce, look at the face on her. She's finally been pulled for contact when she's been physical from the get-go and doesn't like it. So that's the smarts. That's what the Lightning players have got to do. He's got to try and pull those penalties on Courtney Bruce and keep her out of this contest. Nat Medhurst, what are your thoughts at the start of this third quarter? Um, Fever have come out absolutely dominating, but the player I want to talk about is Steph Wood. Um, you know, she's leading the turnovers, which isn't a good thing for the Fever. I'm um, sorry, for the Lightning with five turnovers to her name. She's looking a bit lost and she is carrying the weight this season of being captain of this side. So she needs to get herself back into this game, working well with Conan and really doing what she does best. And I think as well, it starts off these centre passes, getting these setups, getting herself into the circle and really maximising her strengths. Yeah, I completely agree with Nat there. Steph Ward's got to get herself into the circle exactly like that. She can't just be happy to be a connection out the front. Yeah, and you really start to see now the issues the Sunshine Coast Lightning are having at that defensive end with the loss of Carla Pretorius, who is, of course, expecting her first child. Coming into the, the top ten, Maddie Hinchliffe. And, of course, Maddie just playing her third National League match. You compare that to the experience of Pretorius, it is stark. And it's a massive, massive loss this season for the Lightning. And the height, too, that Marweni gives you back there as well. At the moment, Fowler is just towering over any defence put on her. So Wood will just be the... One goal from there, and it bounces away. So another miss from Steph Wood there, really starting to pile up now. Ariang found Anstis, and she just fed foul up. Again, Ooh. though, defence is nowhere to be seen for the Sunshine Coast Lightning. That's been their issue this whole game. There was a patch in that last quarter. They really tightened it up but just far too easy for the West Coast Fever at the moment. Well, it's almost out to 20, and this is something that West Coast Fever will be love 
loving to have a, have a look at the Nissan net points. And another intercept from Amsters that time. Look at the domination on the Nissan net points from the Fever. The top five, Fowler's second, and she is about to go for 43 from 43. Well, the part that I loved, as we just see the replay here of Jess Ansestein through, the part of those Nissan net points I absolutely love. Sasha Glasgow sitting up the top. What a way to respond to giving, being given the start there by Dan Ryan. And I've just spooked her. Sorry, Sasha. <laughs> well, it's, it's fascinating, isn't it? Because, of course, Alice Teague Neal was the starting goal attack in the finals last year. Glasgow's come in today and really hasn't put a foot wrong. And that's the only change from that minor semi-final clash, or I should say the prelim final clash with the Giants last year. Steph Wood, successful. They look depleted already, don't they? Look a defeated, sorry, the, the Lightning. Just look like they're really struggling to find any sort of answer at the moment, and the scoreline getting so far away for them. What do you fix first? It's an incredible record they have here in Perth, the Lightning. They've won all three matches at RAC Arena against the Fever, but today maybe the Travel West has taken its toll. It is a big trip for the Lightning. Of course, they've got to fly to Brisbane, across to Perth. It hasn't been an issue before, but it's stacking up at the moment. Centre obstruction. And again, just way too easy. Sasha Glasgow undefended twice. Comfortable as you like for Sasha Glasgow. Well, the score this quarter is getting ugly. 13 to six just in this third quarter. So can't stop the fever, can't score either, the Sunshine Coast Lightning. Well, that's a big stat, isn't it? Shooting accuracy, 95% the fever, the Lightning down at 82. You just cannot be shooting at that kind of accuracy and expect to win matches of netball. Yeah, Courtney Bruce's arm well and truly wrapped around Kara Conan. Umpire not having it. Even the crowd, they're a little quiet at the moment. The ground announcer, the court side announcer, I should say, really just trying to get the Green Army pumped up. This will do it. Fowler, again, just continues the 100%. 45 from 45. She's heading towards 50. That is a big haul, as is that play. How's the work challenge there from Francis Bayman? Well, we talked about Courtney Bruce monstering her opponent, and now Francis Bayman wants a piece of that action as well. 46 from 46. We're about to enter the power five. Well, Annie Miller, welcome to Suncorp Super Netball. It's just her second National League appearance, first for the Lightning. Well, 50's on the cards. It should come this quarter for Fowler. Wood and now Sherry in over the top to Conan. Well, why is she not shooting it? I know they've got to go for the twos. But still, you've also got to keep possession. And at the moment, there's a lot going on inside that circle. Well, that's the thing. If they are trying to find a shot from the two-point, it is just going to waste more and more time. You think about it, 30 seconds chewed up there. The uh, goal was rocking, so Lightning with a chance. And this time... They get a little bit of fortune around the rim and drains. Well, there's the first one and the contest on the rebound for both players. Kara Conan still a smile on her face. But there's a lot of pressure now on Steph Ward. If their plan is to shoot this quarter out with Suncorp Super Shots, you know that's going to come from the goal attack. And here's another opportunity for her to do just that. Goalkeeper. 
No, I'm not sinking them, but you're so spot on, Ben. It's just chewing precious cent uh, seconds. 60, nearly six centimetres. Well, 66, as I understand, is the most. That was Fowler back in 2018. <laughs> that was the fever against the Thunderbirds. She's 48 at the moment. She's 49 now. 49 from 49 from Fowler. Well, another rookie error there, not wholly within the centre circle. You have to be when you take that centre pass. Keeper, that's contact. So keeper. contact from Hinchliff. And look at Fowler. Because Hinchliff was out of play. Fowler. <laughs> Kate Walsh is out of play as well. It doesn't matter. That is 50 from 50 for Janiel Fowler. Well, and again, straight in. Just way One. too easy. I'd like to see Dehaney back out there. I thought she was doing a decent job of forcing Fowler at least a little bit higher on the shot. Let's go, Let's go. Let's go, Let's go. Another interception this time from Francis Bayman. And look at the desire from Jess Anstis. And the home fans appreciate it. The English international keeping it in and then desperation. What an awesome play there. And doesn't that just tell you all about this game? Seven intercepts to one. And it is the desperation, exactly that. This is a fired up West Coast Fever team here. First game at home in a long time. They want it go one better this season. Nat Medhurst courtside, this fever onslaught continues. Yeah, it really is. And um, Kathy, you, you spoke about the intensity of this fever team. And watching the fever defence on this transverse line, when it's the lightning centre pass, is unbelievable. That's setting a really, really strong wall, which is making it incredibly hard for the lightning attackers to be able to get this centre their centre pass in the first instance. It's forcing them up high, and it's then giving them so many opportunities to have a crack at the ball and turn it over. So the work that Dan Ryan has done with this defensive team um, for the Fever has uh, been phenomenal through the season so far. Thank you, Nat. So just confirming that record is 70 in a game. That was Fowler a couple of seasons ago. She had that record of 66, then broke it, went to 70. And at the moment, she's 52 from 52. So they got... About 10 seconds, Fowler's out of the circle. She's getting back inside now, and she's going to finish with 53 from 53 that third quarter. She looks a little bored, doesn't she? <laughs> it's 26. 26 goals, the lead for the Fever. Kath Cox, this is utter domination. It's a green tsunami in the West. Yeah, I don't know that I was expecting this sort of margin. Felt fairly confident the Fever would get up here, but what a performance and a quarter to come. And we are going to take a quick break and we'll be back on the other side of this as Janiel Fowler chases history again, looking to break her own record. Catch you soon. Welcome back to Perth, where it is the perfect afternoon if you're a West Coast Fever fan. They lead it by 26. Janelle Fowler, 54 from 54, remembering the most goals in the Super Netball era, 70 by Fowler. The highest team score, 80. Well, that's dead and buried. They're 10 away from that with a whole quarter to go. Their lowest quarter so far, the West Coast Fever's been 20. Just incredible. They've got a lot of catching up to do. Bacheldor, Annie Miller, some rookies out there in lightning colours in this quarter time. Brought to you by Origin Energy. Also, I should remind you that for every super shot today, Suncorp will donate $100 to the Confident Girls Foundation to help the foundation continue their work in keeping girls in the game. For more info, you can visit 
cgf.raiselly.com. So massive kudos to Suncorp for those donations, of course, to the uh, community launched in response to the uh, community response grants to help clubs, associations and its members impacted by the devastating floods in Queensland and New South Wales. Our thoughts with all of those affected. Caf Cox, you just saw in that quarter time break that Conan was getting some treatment. There was a lot going on on the Sunshine Coast Lightning bench in that break, that is for sure. The Karakone, and yet plenty of time with the physio. You'll notice she's not on the court now. She wasn't even in the final huddle before they came out. So it looks as though she won't take part in the rest of this game. What an opportunity for Bachelor Door, though. You'd have to say the result is over. It's going to be a loss to the Sunshine Coast Lightning, but a great opportunity nonetheless. Well, great learning experience now for these Lightning players, especially the youngsters out there, the inexperienced players. What do they say? Never waste a bad performance. Always try and learn something, and that's what Lightning have got to do in this fourth quarter. Annie Miller receiving the pass. Batcheldor firing it back to Hinchliff. Just her second National League appearance. Annie Miller finding Wood over the top. Batcheldor. Good start to the fourth quarter for the Lightning. Nat Medhurst courtside as we just have a look at Kara Conan. Yeah, changes are plenty for both teams uh, heading into this final quarter. Dan Ryan asking, particularly from his defenders, to really make sure they continue to apply as much pressure on this Lightning team. Um, expecting that it'll cr create a lot of turnovers for the new players coming on court. Still, them just working into the game, but making sure that their presence is really um, there as well. And looking for that ma uh, the mix in the matchup in the defensive or the, for Janelle Fowler when she's on a goal shooter. So... Another thing I have been told, the biggest margin is 28 goals. So Fever are looking very much on, on task to be um, to beating that score. And their biggest tally is 80, so which is held by West Coast Fever in 2019. So that is the record. They only need another 10 goals to, uh, to beat that. Thanks, Nat. Yeah, and uh, while we're throwing stats out, Fowler needs 16 more to equal her record of 70 in a game. Wood is successful, so a slow start to this fourth term for the West Coast Fever. I haven't got off 70. No, but I love to hear what's coming from Dan Ryan and the defensive pressure. He wants them to pick it up. He's ruthless. He's not going to be happy with just a win. He wants them to absolutely destroy this Sunshine Coast Lightning side and really put a name for themselves out there in this season. So four nothing in this fourth quarter. And the Fever grab their first. No, they can't. Well, change made too. Sasha Glasgow has been moved to the bench. So Teague Neal back in her normal position of goal attack. Emma Kosh there on at wing attack as well. So wholesale change is made and a good opportunity to do it. Give them some court time. You'd have to say the result's pretty much in the bag. Four points staying in the West. And it's really about records at the moment for Dan Ryan's team. As a former goaler himself, he'd be absolutely loving this from his attacking end. And there's Kosh, just lobbing it up over the top. 27th appearance in the National League for her. And now Fowler. There is her first of the fourth quarter. And we have a tactical timeout brought to you by HCF on the way. Well, it did take West Coast Fever a long time to score, though, didn't it? Dan Ryan would love to see those changes made without so much of a slowdown in pace. And five zip to start the fourth quarter is not what he wants. We hassle, we stay in play, we build pressure. Circle edge and attack, right? Attack some depth, attack some depth, all right? Let's respond from this 60 second charge, right? Let's go, come on. Yeah. 
So Dan Ryan is wanting a 60 second push here. Well, asking for a little bit of depth from his attacking players as well. So look for Kosh and Teague Neal just to get themselves a little bit deeper in the goal circle, a bit more space to start their attacking moves. I love Dan Ryan in the huddle though. Walks up, says his bit, walks off. He's not going to stay there just for a chat. Says what needs to be said and he's out of there. Former captain of the Australian men's netball team, of course, taking over from Stacey Marinkovic, the former Adelaide Thunderbirds coach as well, Dan Ryan. So back underway in this fourth quarter after the HCF tactical timeout. Advantage here for contact, so Fowler. Well, she doesn't need a second invitation. How about this? 100% record continues. So she was up around 96% last season across the board. Oh, well, that's sharper move. Looked a lot more impressive there for the Sunshine Coast Lightning. The connection from Bachelor and Wood looks like it's been there for years. Kosh across to Francis Bayman. So two sides last year that had the best possession game to goal conversion. The issue today is, for the Lightning, they just have not been able to break down any of these attacks from the FIFA. They've had very limited opportunities, and you see that on the, the intercept statistic, which is absolutely dominated by the West Coast FIFA. And that's why it's a 22, potentially 23 goal margin at the moment. Oh, seven goals away from the record that they hold with 80. Surely that's going with 10 minutes of play left. Steph Wood looking for an option. Sherian presented. So Ariang has to stand aside and Bacheldor profits. How impressive is she being? Five from five and then one from two in super shot time as well. So absolutely no fear from the 19-year-old. Fowler. Again to Haney though, was happy to sit behind and push her high. And there's the result. You don't often see Fowler sitting up the top of the goal circle there. Oh, she's almost won it back. But yeah, and there's an arm from Francis Bayman. So it will be a lightning ball. The interesting point you make there, Kath, on Dehaney. She's had limited success on Fowler in this match so far, but just a, a glimmer there. Something to take forward for the former Vixen. Of course, searching for more game time, coming to the Sunshine Coast Lightning. Well, that's some good depth. Dan Ryan asked for it. Two passes that cleared a lot of mess. And Teague Neal shot a little flat. She's had one miss already. Started the match as wing attack with Glasgow playing as goal attack, but now back into that role that she played so often last year. It's just too easy. I know this is going to be lightning ball, but how often is Ariane getting in there, getting a deflection, getting an intercept? She's just been superb. Francis Bayman, too, in this quarter, well, since she's come on, has had a lot of effect in that same regard. Just disrupting play, not necessarily winning the ball back. Well, <laughs> nearly did it again for you, Ben. Fantastic energy off the bench from Francis Bayman. So, another one for the Lightning. They don't want to go into the record books, so they want to keep this under 28, because that is the biggest margin in the Suncorp Super Netball. 80 is the highest amount of goals in the Super Netball era. Goals slash points, you could say, of course, with the Super Shot. So that's why it's in the Suncorp Super Shot era. As Fowler for a moment, I thought, <laughs> thought there was going to be a miss, but no, flawless so far. Fowler. Contact from Bruce. So she's going to stand aside and watch Bacheldor complete. 
I know it's not the scoreline the 19 year old would want at the moment, but as we've touched on, great experience on National League debut and Lightning just with a chance here for stepping that infringement. So they'll get the next centre pass. They can just claw back a couple if they're good enough. Well, halfway through this quarter, the West Coast Fever on five. Five in this quarter. The smallest one after that was 20. So this has been a big change for them. Dan Wright will not be thrilled with the way they're finishing this game. And the issue is more so at the attacking end, isn't it? They're just not getting those feeds into Fowler. Teague Neal has had a few moments. Only one from three. And oh, wow. what a tip. Courtney Bruce, the timing from three feet away too. That is exceptionally hard to do. And just look at the speed. Straight up the court into the arms of Fowler. So they get the turnover. And like lightning against the Sunshine Coast. Here it is again on the Harvey Norman replay. The timing. Look at Steph Wood's face. Dejected. So 10-6 at the moment. Nat Medhurst, you've got a thought on the lightning in this fourth quarter. Yeah, their intensity across defence has really picked up and it's just frustrated the Fever so much. And Fever have had their way this entire game so far. So this is now a challenge for the West Coast Fever to step up. They are a team that are known for a lot of for consecutive turnovers, for sometimes getting quite frustrated. So this is a really good challenge for them to step up and keep their heads in the game. They need to peg it back, as Kath mentioned. Uh, they are being outscored this quarter, so they, they are really need, needing to start playing as a team. And there's frustration as well by these Fever girls against the umpires when the calls aren't going their way. So they'll want to finish off strongly. Oh, we're all frustrated when the calls don't go our way. <laughs> Thanks, Nat. Do you put that down to as well? The fact that based on the starting seven, there's a lot of changes to that. And this is why Lightning have been able to claw their way back slightly in this fourth quarter. Absolutely, but there's also been a lot of changes made for the Sunshine Close Lightning across this quarter too. We can see another one now for the West Coast Fever. Rudy Ellis just slipped into goalkeeper. So the rolling subs continue to happen. Oh, and Steph Woods just trying to make amends here in this last quarter. So just confirming that substitution, Bruce still out there, so she goes to goal defence, Ellis into goalkeeper. Verity Simmons, too, is back on in centre for the West Coast Fever, so that might help them a little bit with that flow they were lacking. They want to desperately get to this 80 after all the effort of the first three quarters. Well, the record is not far away. Fowler is 62 from 62 so she's eight away from her record of individual goals slash points of course that's in the the super shot era and now in power time bachelor door she has drained a suncorp super shot already not on that occasion of course remember suncorp donating a hundred dollars to the confident girls foundation for every super shot that is successful across this first round, and look at the Nissan oh. Well, Fowler has just jumped in front, hasn't she? She's leapt in front, 110. And Glasgow, so, as I said before, when she came up in the number one spot, great to see her having a cracking performance, still sitting there at number two. Well, there's the 80. They've evened the record, so an opportunity here to break the record for the most points in a Super Netball game. And how fitting that it comes through Janiel Fowler. So 63 from 63. So in the Super Shot era, that is the record, 81. Remember the record margin is 28. Oh, another opportunity here for the West Coast Fever to challenge as well. Some errors just creeping in both sides this final quarter. You could say two of the best players for the West Coast Fever. Oh, today. do it! Here we go, Fowler for two. <laughs> Well, there it is. That's the first miss, but how good that she wanted to have a crack. 
Love that about Janelle Fowler. Well, she would have gone to 66, so the record probably would have been a chance, but now it's going to be difficult for Fowler. Batchel door on the stretch was Hinchliff. Now Wood. I'm surprised that Wood didn't go for the super shot there. She may on this occasion. And she drain it. Yes, she can, Steph Wood. So five from nine on the super shot. So they've scored a few today from that super shot line. The Sunshine Coast Lightning, seven in total, remembering that last season, on average, they were the lowest scoring team from that super shot line. Oh, taken Janelle Fowler again, double defence, both flying at her. And she's been in that situation a lot. And we see on the Harvey Norman replay here, Delaney really just got knocked off, didn't she? Miller. And you could say two of the best FIFA players in Ariane and Glasgow, not on the court at the moment. So just putting cotton wool, of course. They've got three matches away from home coming up next. Collingwood, the Firebirds and the Vixens. So they've, they really wanted to start this season on the right note. And they've certainly done that as we see Batchelor with a fantastic deflection. Well, the end of this game really can't come soon enough for the Sunshine Coast Lightning, can it? It's a long trip back, isn't it? It, it certainly is. It, it's been a battle since the very first quarter of this game when they lost it 18 to 26. Batchelor for her second super shot brought to you by Suncorp. And there's another for the 19-year-old on debut in the Suncorp Super Netball. And quickly, they are down the court. So just producing a strong finish. Batchelor looking for two in a few seconds. Wood successfully gets one, so it's back to 20. This has been a good fourth quarter for the Sunshine Coast Lightning. 20 points. Fowler reaching, oh, how, how did about she that? she take that? Well, if there's not a physio session in that take tomorrow, I don't know what is. Back breaking. Have a look. <laughs> Have a look at where she had to get her body to to pull that in. And the fever begin season six of the Suncorp Super Netball with the domination of the Sunshine Coast Lightning. 82 to 62. It's all green on the West Coast today. And we're about to head down to hear from our player of the match who is with Nat Medhurst. I'm here with player of the match, Janelle Fowler. Janelle, you were sitting at 64 from 64. Do you kind of regret those super shot attempts? No, we, well, I should have just settled on them and take them because I can make them. So, yeah, just making sure that I settle on them. <laughs> and a great win. You do play the next three on the road. So how important was the start for you? Um, definitely important to boost our confidence going um, on the road. So just making sure we take that over with us. I guess that's the fourth quarter. You were so dominant for the first three. The fourth quarter, you did struggle, particularly in the first half. Is that something that Dan will look at this week? Um, most definitely. We need to make sure that we keep it consistent over all four quarters. So, yeah, that's something we have to look into. And an amazing Perth crowd here. So it must be pretty phenomenal to be back on RAC Arena. It's amazing. I love this crowd. They're just so amazing. Thank you so much. Well done. Thanks, Nat. Thanks to Janelle Fowler. Yeah, Kat, 65 from 65 from one point, from the two points, none from two. So she scored those and she was up near that 70 record that she holds from a couple of years ago. Yeah, it looked like she just got a little bit bored with the one-pointers, wanted to stretch out a little bit in that final quarter, but she can nail them. We've seen her do that. What a domination from her and the West Coast Fever. They will be very disappointed. Dan Ryan will be very disappointed with that last quarter, though. Only scored 12, and it was the best quarter for the Sunshine Coast Lightning. So whilst it was a great performance, they didn't give him four quarters. Well, here are the stats. And if you're a Lightning fan, they don't make wonderful reading. Just see the gains there. That is 
massive. Of course, shooting accuracy is significant, but the gains, look at that. Yeah, absolutely huge there. And then you take your eye right down to the bottom of the page, 520 Nissan net points to the West Coast Fever and just the 170 for the Sunshine Coast Lightning. That there is telling. Also, the turnovers for the West Coast Fever, 13 for a full game of netball is impressive. They will be happy with that stat.